Okay, in this video, we're going to take a walkthrough on the new interface on Google TV. Now, those of you who already own a Sony Internet TV with Google TV already have this interface. You've had it as of November of this year, 2011. But just this past week, Logitech has started to roll out its Honeycomb update to the Logitech Review with Google TV. And that's what I have here. My Logitech Review with Google TV, I just updated today to Honeycomb, and I really love it. And I can honestly say from first-hand experience, if you're in the market for an online streamer, your two best choices are Roku and the Google TV, the Logitech Review with Google TV. As I mentioned, there is the Sony version, but the Logitech Review is superior in that you actually get a Harmony remote in your keyboard, you get full surround sound on the device, and you can get it for $99. Now, the previous interface on the Logitech Review with Google TV was very scattered, not very organized, and not very user-friendly. But now with the Honeycomb update, everything is very user-friendly, very upfront. You don't have to dive into different menus to find what you want. And although the Roku might be just a little bit more straightforward and easy to use, there's not much of a difference between the two as far as difficulty is concerned. So if you're on the fence about buying a Logitech Review or a Roku device, I can break it down for you very easily. For the $99 price bracket, you're dealing with a Logitech Review with Google TV versus a Roku 2 XS. And because of the web browsing capabilities, the keyboard with the Harmony remote built in, and all the apps currently available and going to be available in the future, I would definitely recommend the Logitech Review with Google TV over the Roku 2 XS. If you want to spend less than $99, then I would recommend getting the Roku device. The Roku LT currently is the lowest end Roku that you can get, and it will probably meet most of your streaming needs, and you can get it for only $49.99. So if you want to spend less than $99, definitely go with the Roku device because it's the best bang for your buck. If you're looking to spend the $99, then definitely go with the Logitech Review with Google TV because it offers you so much more than a Roku device would. So let's jump into the user interface on this new Honeycomb update to the Logitech Review with Google TV. No longer do you see a home screen with a lot of different menus. It's very basic. You have whatever your attention is on, whether it's your television, your live television, your web surfing, whatever it is, is on the big screen. And then you hit your home key on the keyboard and you see this bottom menu here that you see in front of you here. On that menu, you see the time. And next to that, you see actually notifications. Now, notifications have been a part of Android since the beginning, but they haven't been on the Google TV up until now. So right here you see I have six notifications. All of those are related to apps that I've downloaded. So I'm just gonna click on that and show you what the notifications look like. This is Honeycomb, and if you're used to Honeycomb tablets, the interface is spot on with Honeycomb. You see here my notifications. All these notifications here are, as I said, related to apps that I downloaded. And you can scroll through the list. At the bottom, you can mute notifications. I don't want to, I actually like the notifications. And when you get one, it will appear on your screen. You can clear them all, or you can clear them individually. Also on the screen, you'll see you have notifications here and recent apps over here. Now the recent apps is part of your multitasking. Now let's back out of this and I'm gonna show you multitasking on this device. Now, if you're familiar with Android, you know that if you long press the home button, it brings up your recent apps. And it's the same on the Logitech Review with Google TV. Just long press on the home button and it brings up all of your recent apps here. So it makes it easy for you to jump between recent applications that you've been using. Another thing that's nice about the multitasking on this device and goes hand in hand with the apps is that you can actually play music on Google Music and surf the internet at the same time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna hit the home button here, and I'm going to go to the next part here, which is all apps. And this is basically your app drawer on your Android device. So you click on this, and it brings up all the apps that you have on your device. And as you see, I have several of them on here, and I can scroll through them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 
the Google Music app, which I just recently downloaded. I'm going to click on that. And as you see, I was playing a song here. Now, I don't really have a lot of songs on my Google Music library. I do have the free songs that they give you, and I also have some royalty-free music that I have loaded on here for my demonstrations. That way I don't run into copyright problems. So this is one of those royalty-free songs, but let me back out of here. And you see the whole list over here, and this is what the interface looks like on Google Music on the Logitech Review with Google TV. Now over here on the menu you see I could go to Recent, Albums, Artists, Songs, Playlists, Genres, and I can search my Google Music Library. But I'm just going to go back here um, to the song that I was on before. That way, like I said, I don't get into a copyright issue. And I'm going to click on this and start playing it. I'm going to turn this down. It's not really a song I'd necessarily be listening to if I didn't have to have royalty-free music right now. But as you can hear, it's low, but it's playing in the background. And if it was really a song I liked, I'd be cranking it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my home button. And as you can hear, it's still playing in the background. And I can go all the way over to my Google Chrome. And I already have my YouTube page pulled up here. And I can surf the internet while I'm listening to music. Anything that's on my Google Music library, I can listen to. So that's a really cool feature and it is part of the multitasking on this device. Now the Logitech Review with Google TV actually runs off of an Atom processor. So multitasking is not really an issue with it because it's a full-fledged desktop processor, even though it is the low end of the desktop processors. And I'm going to long press the home button here so I can go back to Google Music and I'm going to pause this song here. And let's back out of this. Now the next selection down here next to all apps is TV, live TV. Now as I've mentioned before in my other Google TV videos, I don't have my cable provider hooked up to my Google TV device. It is made that you can actually do so, but I don't have an HDMI out from my cable box, so I'm not able to do that. But if you do, you can actually watch live TV on this device and you can actually search for things using the Google search on this device and actually bring up live TV programs from there, provided that your cable provider is compatible with the Google TV device. The next thing here is TV and movies. And I really like this feature here. I'm going to click on it and bring it up. And what this is, it's an aggregated menu of different TV shows and movies, and it pulls from different sources. So as you see over here on the left-hand side of the screen, you have what's on TV, so that will be your live TV that you could search. Again, I don't have my cable hooked up to it, so I can't use that. Below that is shows. Now this can pull from a couple of sources. It can pull from YouTube, it can pull from Netflix, and it can pull from Amazon On Demand. That's really a nice feature that it aggregates all those things together and you can just use one area to do your search on. And below that is movies. And basically what you do is you search through the different genres. You have comedy, you have drama, you have family, animation and cartoons, reality and game shows, and special interest. You can also pull up your menu here and have personalized recommendations. Now if you don't want to filter through a list of shows and movies, you can actually search by pressing your search button on your keyboard. And that brings up your universal search on this device. So let's just look up Breaking Bad. As you see here, you have five search results here. The first of which is see all TV, movie, and video results. The second one is a web search. The third one is the actual show Breaking Bad, where you can watch it from the sources that it aggregates from, whether it's Netflix or Amazon On Demand. And then you have below that, the fourth one down, is an actual related search. So it's not actually Breaking Bad, but it actually uses the words within that to do a search. So it says the bad news bears in Breaking Training. So you have Breaking and Bad in there, but that's not necessarily what you might be looking for but it would come in handy if you just know a couple of words in a title 
don't remember the other words and it might bring up a suggestion for you there. And then the final selection is the YouTube search. So if I went down here to Breaking Bad, looking up the TV series, there are 46 episodes available, I click on it and it brings up all of the seasons from this series and like I said it aggregates it from Netflix or Amazon On Demand. So if I go to season one I can click on it and it shows all the episodes and it shows where I can get them. Now I know that seasons one through three are available on Netflix and that's probably what it is here where it says free. If you notice in the right hand column over there it says free. So I could watch them from here and click on it and just enter in. I can see it from Netflix or Amazon. So it's really a cool feature for you to find your content really easily. The next selection down here is Netflix. So let's click on that. And this is your Netflix interface on the Logitech Review with Google TV. Gives you all your genres, your recommendations, and then if you want you can go all the way to the top and search for exactly what you want. Let's back out of here. And you have a YouTube lean back feature here. I'm not a huge fan of YouTube lean back, but you can actually go into it and it will offer up suggestions for you to watch. I generally don't like to film YouTube lean back because it just offers up videos straight out of the gate and uh, I don't want to get into any copyright problems with anybody, so I'm not going to show you that, but it just serves up videos to you and you can search for what you want. But it's almost like a TV station where you just get content streamed to you, but the difference is, is that you can actually search for things that you might want. Now the next selection over here is the Android Market. Now this is a new addition to the Google TV device here, and it's a welcome addition. And I'm starting to see some apps starting to filter in. And this is your interface here. One thing that I would love to see in the Android Market is a web browser that you can actually use Hulu and network television streaming on. Because if there's one Achilles heel on the Google TV device is that you can search the entire internet, but Hulu and network TV stations actually block the device from actually watching stuff off of their web pages. Now, personally, I think that's ridiculous because I can just as easily watch those things on my computer, but that's just the way it is right now. So I would love if somebody would port a browser or create a browser explicitly for Google TV where you can watch streaming video without having to worry about that video being blocked by the providers. Now up top here you have a selection of recommendations here. And below that you have featured for TV. Now there are only eight here where it shows you that they're featured, but I could go to view all and it would bring up the list. And there's a Christmas storybook, I storybooks here for 99 cents, Brain Cube. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. You have Blank Spot for Google, IGN Pro League, Plenty of Fish, Online Dating, Google Music, which is something I downloaded, Flickster Movies, CNN Money, Crunchyroll, Fox News, NFB Films for Google, Unique Rabbit, Hexwalk, Avia Media Player, Motor Trend, Dragonfly Full, Cozy Family Organizer, CNBC Real Time, Twitter for Google TV, Maps on TV, Clicker for Google TV, Fuzz Sports for Google TV, iStorybooks, Dragonfly Free, Redux for Google TV, Craft Foods Cooking, Wall Street Journal Live, AOL HD, Serious Scramble Free, Quello for Google TV, Classy Fireplace, Droplets TV, All Recipes, NASCAR.com, Fox Business, Flight Board, Tiny Cam, Me Genius, Zynga Poker, QVC, Plex for Google TV, Pandora, and The Big Picture. Now these are the featured for your television set. You can actually search up top here for whatever you might want to search for. So let me see if they have words with friends here. doesn't look like you can get that, but as you see, there are a lot more apps here than were available in the recommended for TV. So there are apps that you can actually download for this device that are not recommended for the television, but are apps that will work on this device. 
So it's really a welcome addition to the Google TV to have the Android market. There are two other icons back here. There's Google Chrome and then there's Search. Now you actually have a Search button on your keyboard, but if you don't want to use that, you could actually use the last icon here and click Search, and that would give you your universal search on the Google TV. But let's go back, and the last one we're going to check out here is Google Chrome. And you saw a little bit of that earlier when I was on my YouTube page. Now, as you may be familiar, on a Google Chrome browser, you have a unified address bar slash search bar. And the same is true on this device. So you can type in a search term if you want. or you can actually type in a URL. So that's the Logitech review with Google TV. Honeycomb is definitely an upgrade. And as I said before, if you're looking to buy a streamer for your television set, and you want to spend $99, this is the device you should get. So get it while supplies last. The Logitech Review, they don't make them anymore. They're still selling the device because they still have an inventory of them, but they're not making new ones. So definitely get your hands on one if you want a streamer and you're willing to spend $99 on it. If you want to spend less than $99, definitely go with a Roku device. Now just because the Logitech Review has been discontinued doesn't mean Google TV is discontinued. Sony still sells a version, whether it's in a television set or in a Blu-ray player form. And you can expect next year Samsung to be coming out with a Google TV device. And Eric Schmidt has been quoted as saying that televisions will ship with Google TV loaded on them in mid-2012. I personally like the idea of a standalone device. So I like to have this Logitech review. I think it is, if of all of the Google TV devices available right now, it's the one to own. So that pretty much does it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.